Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Programming. I am Naveen Mishra and I will continue teaching you how to write programs in C++ language. In this video, I will cover important topic of C++ language that is polymorphism and its type. Before I start this video, I will suggest you guys to please subscribe and share my channel. Okay, let's start with this video. Let's start with the polymorphism. I will focus on smaller videos as I as I have reviewed my channel and realized that videos are getting videos are uh, getting more than half hour watch time or more than uh, 30 minutes. So I will focus on creating videos only for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so let's start now. Polymorphism. Now what is polymorphism? Creating more than one function, creating more than one operator or in short creating more than one type of function with same name and different type of argument list is called polymorphism. Generally polymorphism means change in behavior or same person showing different type of behavior based on the person that that uh, based on the persons he is, he or she is meeting with okay so poly means many and morph means forms many forms of same name generally i give an example to my students that in a family two siblings will not be given the same name because if we do so then when the parents call call those call those siblings then they will be confused that which sibling was called by the parents so generally we give two different names to the two or three different names to the siblings but there will be scenarios or cases where you have to give the same name for the uh, multiple purposes for example let's say calculating the area now area is calculated of circle area is calculated of sphere cylinder cone but all these calculation of areas have different formulas so I can create only one function that is calculate area which will be of same name but different parameter list because of their different behaviors. So this is the example of situation where you need the polymorphism. So it means having many forms with the same name. Creating more than one method or operator or function with the same name but different argument list is called polymorphism. Argument list difference is important so that the compiler or at the runtime, we come to know that which function definition to execute when the function is called. It may be function definition or operator definition or constructor definition. The function or operator that you want to call, that you want to execute the definition based on the call is selected by the by matching the number of arguments as well as the data type of the arguments that are passed during the function call. Now polymorphism is of two types. One is compile time polymorphism and another is runtime polymorphism. What it generally means is if I am creating two functions with same name then when you call a function how the compiler will come to know that which function to execute and when the compiler comes to know at which stage the compiler comes to know that I want to execute that uh, definition of the function. So during compile time as soon as you compile your program the, uh, or you run your program the definition is linked with the function call at runtime it is done it is implemented using pointers where based on the reference passed the exact definition to be executed is decided so the time when it is finalized that which function block to execute categorizes the polymorphism in two types compile time polymorphism is also called static binding or static linking or early binding or early linking because once the definition is linked with the function call it will not be changed during the execution of the program runtime polymorphism is also called dynamic binding or dynamic linking or late binding or late linking because the function definition is uh, in uh, con connected with the function call at the runtime based on the reference of the pointer passed and not based on the type of pointers okay Compile time polymorphism is implemented by three ways. There are some books or many of them says 
that there are two types but i consider constructor overloading as also a part of the polymorphism so according to me there are three types of polymorphism function overloading operator overloading or constructor overloading and runtime polymorphism is implemented using pointers implementing virtual functions is an example of runtime polymorphism now uh, i can show it uh, diagrammatically as so polymorphism can be categorized into two types compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism compile time polymorphism is further divided into three types function overloading operator overloading and constructor overloading and runtime polymorphism is of only one type that is virtual functions so this is the diagram that you guys can draw while implementing or writing your definitions in your uh, exams okay now so i'll start with constructor overloading now as you as i have told you constructors in the previous videos uh, i will use the different uh, i will use the previous program to help you explain what is going on here as an overloading constructor so creating more than one constructor in the same class is also part of constructor overloading now i have written a program here in this program i am creating a class employee having two variables id and name inside the public access i have declared created a constructor employee then i have used the same name and created another constructor now this is a polymorphism this constructor have no arguments but this constructor have two arguments so the constructor is overloaded and i am creating the third constructor that is of copy constructor and again i am using another constructor which have only one argument so this is one argument this is two argument this is zero argument so these are overloaded now which function or constructor will be executed is selected on the parameters passed so since i am creating same name constructor so this is a constructor overloading when i write this line employee space space e1 that is i am creating an object of employee class inside the main function it will call the default constructor because i am not passing any arguments here so this constructor will be executed and when i am passing two values like the employee id and the name then compiler will will see that if there is any constructor with two arguments and same matching data type so there it is and this function will be called or constructor will be executed and if i pass e2 object of employee class then it will call this function constructor so this is the part of constructor overloading that you guys were earlier doing in the copy constructor program that i have written for you guys okay after that let's start with the constructor overloading before constructor overloading i will explain you compile time polymorphism so the function which is called and matched with the definition is done at the compile time the arguments passed at the function call is compared with the function definition just like the constructor overloading i have shown you so the function call parameters are passed with the function name parameters both in number and data type of arguments okay so this is the compiler time polymorphism compile time polymorphisms are faster as compared to runtime polymorphism but they are less flexible okay so let's start with the first topic of uh, compile time polymorphism that is function overloading so in function overloading i will create more than one function with same name but different parameter list the function definition is selected on the basis of argument passed now if you are implementing function overloading it can be achieved in two ways number one by changing the number of arguments or parameters for example i am creating a function add the first definition does not have any arguments so zero arguments are passed the second function have one argument of integer and the third function have two arguments as integer so all these functions will be executed and there is no issue of function overloading uh, of function uh, name used again or function redefined again there is no issue like that here you can do the same using the changing the data type of the arguments as well as you guys can see here i am passing integer argument but here i am passing float argument so this will also be your Uh, function overloading so function overloading can be performed by changing the number of arguments or by changing the data type of the arguments what if you guys do that you have create, you, you create a function void add and create another function int add it doesn't mean that the function is overloaded 
So changing the return type will not implement function overloading because when you call the function, you only pass the arguments and do not pass the return type. Okay, the return type is used for some other purpose. So this is the this is the knowledge of function overloading that one should know before implementing the program. Now let's start with the writing a program first. So I will write a program here. I will write the heading first program to implement function overloading. So let me define the header files first. Now I will use the namespace standards. Now I'll write a class and place the functions in it. Okay, so class function overload. This is the end of class. I will implement two variables or three variables. Inside the public access, I'm creating a first function void get out is the message I'm right just writing a message here and asking the value of a and b here now I will read the value using c in I'm creating another function here, but this time I will use the parameters. Here I will pass the value like this. And I will use a show function to add these values. Now in the main function, I will call these functions. So I'm creating an object of function overload dot now it is asking me the function that I want to use I will call this function get I am not passing any arguments and call in this show function now here when I call the get function it might get confused that there are two get functions but the compiler will see the arguments I am not passing any arguments and it will execute the function with no arguments Okay, so I think this should work. Let me save this program first. Let's compile and run this program. Now, as you guys can see, function definition with no arguments, that is first function is executed. I can pass the values. And there you go, sum of A and B is there. To call the second function, I what I can do is I can create another object and call this get function. Now this get function need two values. I can pass that and then run. Okay. Uh, you see here first function is called, then second function is called automatically, and this a 10 and 20 values are passed here and this function executes if I change the function definition function return type and try to execute this function it will generate an error message that you have already defined the function function cannot be overloaded so changing the return type will not impl implement the function overloading as these two functions are same okay so this is the program of function overloading
that you guys can implement by yourself okay i hope you guys have understood this topic okay thank you very much for watching my video that's it from this video we'll see you in the next video where i will cover the topic of operator overloading thank you very much see you in the next video cheers